Are you recording this? Hey, good morning, everyone. Oh, so I'm sorry. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And uh, so I just got home and I'm hitting record. There's uh, three topics that I'm going to talk about today. Uh, one of them is on China. And then we're going to talk about what we purchase. And then I'm going to try and make a case for uh, IWNY and QQY as maybe taking the crown here from the, the Tusli family. Uh, but that's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I want to see if I can make a case. So as I was driving, I watched a lot of Chinese vi uh, videos on the um, potential collapse of this thing. So let's watch the news first. And then uh, I would love to get some feedback from the, the, the peanut gallery and what their take on it. So why, why uh, income investor is looking at China? Really, the only thing that for us, for the income investor, we own Clip. Clip is one of the most stable uh, dividend provider. It's literally the top uh, state uh, dividend provider last year in 2023. And uh, so a lot of us own a lot of Clips, and Clip own a lot of KWEBS. And KWEBS is pretty much the Chinese technology ETF. And uh, now they're all based in Hong Kong, not in mainland, but however... It, it's it's having some negative effect on everything. We're gonna we're gonna review all that. Okay, so let's watch this video real quick so we have an idea. Let's talk about it all with somebody who knows a thing or two about China and markets. That is famed hedge fund manager Kyle Bass, founder and chief investment officer of Heyman Capital Management. Kyle, I mean, we knew things were bad. Evergrande, the biggest property developer in the world, liquidate, liquidate, didn't go back, went bankrupt and now is liquidated. But when we see indexes fall 8% in a day, something's up. Well, actually, something's down. But uh, good to see you, Brian. Um, I left I think the door right open on that one. <laughs> yeah, you did. This time it wasn't a revolving door, which is better for you. And maybe we'll get to that one day. But um, I think that uh, uh, when you have a scenario like Evergrande, Evergrande and Country Garden together have $500 billion worth of debt. Two companies have 500 billion. Every single property developer in China that's that's public or listed is in default bankruptcy today. Um, when the Chinese miracle, and I put the miracle in quotes, uh, when the Chinese miracle was running its course, uh, it was all real estate focused, let's say all. The substantial majority of Chinese GDP growth was real estate and the concentric circles that, that surround real estate. And now you're having a reversal after a, a, a an unregulated and and uh, uh, unabated climb in real estate. Now you're seeing a real estate collapse. So this is just like the U.S. financial crisis on steroids. They have three and a half times more banking leverage than we did going into the crisis. And they've only been at this banking thing for a couple of decades, Brian. China is going to get much worse, no matter how much their regulators say we're going to oh, we're going to protect individuals from Melissa short selling. Imagine, imagine regulators blaming a 15-year swoon on their stock market on short sellers. It's just, uh, it's, it's hilarious. Well, I think politicians everywhere have that in common. They got to find something easy to blame. But go, I want to go back to your point, okay? Because a lot, of, a lot of our audience, very smart, probably the smartest audience out there, may not fully comprehend how big Country Garden and Evergrande are or were. They're not household right, names. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, unless you, I, you guys want to keep on watching. Is I mean, it's only a, a four-minute video, get... but, you know, you all can go watch it on your own self, you know. So first of all, uh, what's your take on the Chinese uh, economy? Um, and, and, you know, and why do you care about it? You know, like... Yeah, just uncue your mic, and I would love to get their feedback on that. Yeah, Chinese economy is the second biggest economy in the world, and uh, also a biggest exporter and importer, providing goods and services globally. Having them in the global crash, as explained, uh, or economy collapse, this uh, this is uh, a risk that can spill over to other countries um, that basically have trading relationship with China. Mm -hmm. And um, as mentioned, because of the fact that uh, those uh, real estate development, 
they are currently underwater or basically close to a bankrupt, a bankruptcy, uh, that's going to have a, an impact uh, to the world economy as a whole. Because um, a lot of uh, trading and commercial relationship, trading relationship with China is uh, based on high demand. China is a is very big country, um, and um, and also reliant on energy, reliant on agriculture, and a lot of things that they either export or import. Yep. And the fact that uh, this economy collapse is happening as we speak, and it's going to take time for them to recover. Uh, that's going to be detrimental to the overall global GDP. We currently haven't seen this full impact yet because this is kind of like in the beginning, but it will have a ripple effect over time. Especially when the gentleman mentioned that it's going to get much worse when the both uh, biggest developers, uh, real estate developers in China basically holding about $500 billion of portfolio that is currently, uh, sorry, not portfolio, but the debt, collective debt of $500 yeah. billion dollars, uh, for Evergrande, Evergrande and Country Garden, which has the two biggest real estate developers in China. And they have recently mentioned that they're going to liquidate their asset and not be able to meet their debt obligation. And that's a, a real, real problem. Yeah, it here's here's my main thesis, and and I anybody else want to jump in. We're about to we're about to witness two things going to happen here in the next year or so. Uh, maybe too early to call this. I mean, literally, we're about to watch the collapse of the 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 CCP, the Chinese government, or or essentially the collapse of the entire economic system. I mean, it just one or the other, because it's all around. It's not just, not just properties. Um, you know, their banking is issued. They have there's there's people who just can't withdraw money. Their factories shutting down. People are bailing out. Uh, it seems like the only company that still have faith in China is Disney, Tesla, and Apple. <laughs> like, but everybody else they go to Vietnam. They go to Thailand. They go to India. They're going everywhere else other than China. Uh, and so they're just, uh, especially uh, uh, manufacturing, like clothing manufacturing and stuff like that. Uh, it's just, it's, it's been a mess. Um, and so we're, we're looking at a potential total system failure here. Because one of the things that I look for is you can start seeing open revolt. Uh, China economy collapse. And then you and then you're gonna see. Let me see. If I can find people are just essentially uh, uh, protesting down the CCP, uh, you know. And there's eventually somebody there, there's that that Pandora's box is wide open. People, uh, what's the difference between that and 1989 Tiananmen Square? I think 1989. Some somebody tell me the year. I'm wrong. Uh, Back then, they didn't they didn't have a taste of democracy and capitalism. They didn't have any flavor. But now they have flavor. They know what you know TikTok does. They know what uh, you know what a a girl with you know quality you know like they they know what a nice car is, luxury brand, and all those all those things. Back in 1989, they I mean they were just trying to come out and trying to figure out what's going on with the world. They were just peeking their head out. So now people knows what it is. They, they when you see K-pop and Japanese films and all the surrounding countries just getting richer and getting stronger, getting uh, you know the economic engine just unbelievable in Korea and Tokyo and and now you see Thailand's coming about. You see you know you know and Vietnam is coming along and you see all these other countries that's just growing prosperity just all around them and they all getting rich. As some, you know, so people in China know what it's like to get rich. They want to get rich, and they can get rich. 
But guess who's stopping them? Their own government. So, so eventually gonna, they're gonna they're gonna be some massive revolt against their own system. I don't know if they're gonna take arm and and actually have revolutions. Uh, but what's gonna happen is they're so unbalanced. You've got people who just no longer unemployed. They can't get jobs, uh, and and as a result, they're hurting. And and it just it's gonna be eventually you're gonna have to. They, the government has to answer that question, and people are gonna have to do something about it. I think I don't know how far they are from taking arms against the CCP, but this this does not look good. This does not look good at all. All right, uh, are you all agreed with what I say? Let's start with that. Any anybody here agreed? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, is Matt, uh, Matt just arrived, wow, good to see Matt, and Matt, um, how, what's going on in China, because you're in the same time zone, you know, as, as China, and, but we're over here, and we're looking at, I don't know if you heard me when you first came in, uh, we're, we're looking yeah. at, we're looking at a potential, a total collapse of the government system, or the collapse of the economic system, it's like one or the other, you know? collapse of the economic system has already started yeah um now just what the contagion is on that i don't know um but if you think back to the 2008 financial crisis in yeah. the states and there was about a trillion dollars lost in that collapse um this is going to dwarf that because their banks are so overcapitalized i think it's about 3x what the us was at the time of the 2008 collapse yeah and you got to remember there's half a trillion dollars that's been lost because um two real estate companies have gone belly up yeah. so that's all of the debt that they carried on the book plus the notes and they're all unsecured lenders so you know um It, it's something that we're going to have to watch very, very closely. Um, whether that affects CLIP or not, I think it's a bit too early to tell. Yeah. But I'm watching it like a hawk. Um, because, I, like, at the end of the day, yeah. um, KWeb and CLIP are tied to um, internet and internet purchases and the internet commerce. And it's, like, as I said before, um China is the manufacturing powerhouse for the world. So while they'll be affected, I don't think they'll be just as affected because those companies are still going to keep producing products and we're going to keep buying them. So, and that was my thesis going into Clip is that I only wanted to be in that sector. I didn't want to worry about real estate or um, their mining or any of that sort of crap. It was just specifically anything internet related to them. So I'm thinking of, you know, Alibaba and their own software companies and all that sort of stuff. Um, Baidu and all of them, you know. So I'm watching the top 10 holdings um, in KWeb to see what's happening. And I'm watching that daily at the moment. And I'm... It, <sighs> including the, the loss in share price and including the dividends that I've paid, I'm still out ahead. So I'm not too concerned if I've got to cut the position anytime soon, but I am watching it. I'm not going to, it's not a knee jerk reaction, but it bears looking at harder than I have been. Yeah, well said, man. So let's. Uh, I'm. I'm looking at uh, their top ten holding for K Web. For first of all, let's look at K Web. Um, so in February, they they've been declines. Uh, so in January of 2024, um, let, let me look at one year. Uh, one year ago, they were thirty two dollars. So they're twenty five percent decline right now for one year ago, and at they've been hovering back and forth. Uh, you know their lowest is on twenty two dollars, but they've been hovering back and forth between twenty three and twenty four, up and down. All right, so they are they are staying afloat. 
Now, crane share mm. operate out of Hong Kong, so people don't know that. They're not in mainland. Uh, this is a U.S. company that operate in Hong Kong. This is the entryway into China. Uh, and KWeb is their biggest uh, portfolio. Um, so it's $5 billion um, worth of assets, and it's essentially carry... Um, I mean, it's KWeb is crane share, but KWeb doesn't pay any dividends. Uh, they, I mean, they do, but it's not, it's not like, so, you no, know, like here you go here's the annual payout. But they use Clip, which owned by Crane Share also. Crane Share buy KWeb, and uh, and they do cover call on it, and that's how they get income. So when you watch th- their CEO uh, talk about Crane Share and KWeb, they're essentially a, a, a partnership, like a marriage, and that's how you play it. And that's essentially the best way to play it. Um, so let me go back to the holding again. Let me. This is all the company they hold, their top 10. You got Alibaba, as you think of Amazon. Uh, Tencent, you think, when you think of Tencent, this is their mo- mobile app. Their biggest mobile app is their Wii servers. This is like Microsoft, WhatsApp, Kakao, everything all rolled in one. And their Wii servers pay for like, it, it does everything, you know, when it, this app. It's just unbelievable. I don't know much about PDD holding. Uh, but there's a lot of companies out here. Uh, you see a lot of commotion on Baidu, <laughs> like, uh, and they they are p- pretty much owning all the who's who in China. You know, in terms of uh, technology, in terms of uh, uh, company, in terms of gaming company, uh, Tencent Entertainment. They are the gaming companies. So. Uh, yeah, so it's it, this is this is not something small. This is big. This is huge. Let me just give you an idea. Uh, if I go to uh, Yahoo Finance real quickly, and I'm going to type uh, PDD, and it's like 120 something dollar stocks. Uh, yeah, it's 128. PDD is 128. That's the second holding. Alibaba is uh, Baba. Is seventy three dollar, and Alibaba is one of the most recognized name, like uh, in terms of Chinese company. Yeah, so KWeb is doing really well. They're they're just they're just struggling along, floating. They're not like straight down like everybody else, and um, so they're just struggling along. I don't, we don't know. It's just like what Matt say. We don't know what the future is, but as long as they're hovering and staying afloat, um, Clip is going to hovering and stay afloat too, and. Um, and this is this is something like Matt say you got to keep an eye on this uh, because right now Clip uh, is hovering around fourteen seventy one, and they essentially just now Clip has always been declined. It's not like it's something new, but this is the biggest decline I've seen. It went from sixteen dollar to fourteen seventy one in a very short time. Normally, it doesn't do that. Take time to come down so you can DCA with it. I DCA with it. I was down to like 50 cents off, but now now it's just out of control. I can't even keep up with it. Um, now, will, will it get lower? Can it get lower? Yes, it can get lower. Uh, and you know what the, the, the surprise part about Clip is that even though it get lower, man, the dividend is still doing really well. It's still paying 67%, uh, 57 last month in January, 62 in December. 67 November, 69 October. It's still one of the highest paying dividends uh, ETF in the exchange. Just think about it. It's, this is the highest. Uh, and so it's it's unbelievable uh, portfolio. So if you want to own uh, like purely income generation, uh, Clip is a tool. If you're starting out, this is great. You're getting at 1471, but people like me who own it for a while now and we've been DCAing down, I'm, I'm just... I, it's just right now, it just run by me. Uh, but I will continue to DCA with it. And, um, you know, one of the question is, you think it can get lower? I don't know. At this point right now, we don't know. We don't know if we- uh, KWeb can go down lower. Uh, you know, and if, if KWeb can go down lower, because CraneShare own KWeb. I mean, sorry, Clip own KWeb stocks. They do cover call on on Clips. But the good thing is they do monthly cover call on clip, so they're able to generate good profit, and yet they still maintain the capital a little bit. Otherwise, they're going to be looking like nine dollar stock, like Tesla. Uh, I doubt. I doubt that this is ever going to get to a nine dollar situation. That's just my opinion. 
Um, but I could be wrong, man. But uh, does anybody else have a different view, in my opinion, than my opinion? Um, I just want to add something there. Yeah. Um, to give you a bit of an idea, mm -hmm. um, Alibaba mm -hmm. has been trading flat over the last six months. Yeah. Um, Encent has been trading flat over the last six months. Yep. And PDD, they're the top three holdings, so Pinduo Duo, is up 50% yep. over the last six months. So... If there's any contagion from what's going on in China and particularly the property sector, it's pretty much left, left the internet stocks alone. Yep. And I think um, while there's pressure on on the totality of China for its um, economics, it, um, it just seems to have been leaving them alone. But that's why I'm watching it really carefully. Like those top three stocks yeah. is 27, 28 percent of the total portfolio for K Web. Oh yeah, owning PD, yeah. PDD is pretty strong. Owning Alibaba mm. is strong. I mean, that's just unbelievable. That's ten percent of their portfolio. Um, yeah. So um, I don't think it's cause for concern, but I certainly think that if people are in Clip or K Web, they need to watch it closely. Yeah. And I do. Um, and maybe set some alerts up for news and stuff like that. Like, as I said before, I don't think it's time to make an knee-jerk reaction. Like, if, if, if I look at Clip um, in the share price, I'm down the equivalent of one month's distributions. So... Um, as I said, it's a wait and see thing for me, but yeah. watching it like a hawk. Yeah. So this is my portfolio, and this is how I play in clip. Uh, I'm just this is how I'm playing. Um, I bought. I, I continue to buy shares of clip uh, every time the prices hit low, and and I I I spend twenty shares. So I'm not buying a lot. I like ten share, twenty shares. I'm just buying. Essentially, it will eventually, if you keep doing it, eventually it's going to come down also. But uh, I have enough right now. It generate my, my clip at $0.57, cents, it generate $1,000 on its own. So my clip is my fourth-week payer. It's the only fourth-week payer I have right now. All right? I have two first-week payer. I have a whole bunch of second-week payer. I have a whole bunch of third-week payer. But I don't have one. That's clip. Clip is holding my week, that the whole week. And I'm going to continue to grow on it. So here's the thing. If you're new, if you're brand new to the investment and you want to diversify and you got Tesla and you're like, oh, Tesla's kind of, you know, you're not sure, whatever, you want to own it, take a look at Clip uh, and, you know, at $14 because the price is pretty cheap. And will it go lower? I don't know. We don't know. There's no way to know. Will, will the economy come back up? We don't know that either. We don't know how long it's going to stay. But right now, just like me and Matt predicted, is that, and, and what the data show is that the internet is pretty much left alone. Or the technology, uh, Chinese technology is, uh, is being left alone. Why is that? It's just, it's just how China young population uh, view in the world. They, they, they will cut everything off, but they won't cut off their telephone uh, and their internet because they need that ability to communicate to make videos, to edit, to post, to share, email, uh, to you know, to record stuff. It's just unbelievable how much they are so thirst for technology. So therefore, they're not cutting that service. Uh, so it's still affected. The other thing is because I don't live in China because you see YouTube video all over the place how bad it is. The housing is collapsing. The bank is collapsing. People protest everywhere. But then you see the other YouTube where girls still dancing on the street somewhere. You know, they're still walking around, still dancing, still looking beautiful. So it's like the yin and yang, depending on what you want, what you watch. If you watch a whole bunch of rich people doing driving Lamborghinis, yeah, there's a whole bunch of that. And then you want to watch poor people smashing banks, there's a whole bunch of that too. So I don't know because I don't live in China. So when I call my friends up, I was like, hey, man, how's it going in the economy in China? He's like, uh, 
Yeah, it's a very isolated incident right now. Uh, you know, he's looking at, he said, if you own any of these property, you own any of these banks, he said, mostly outside of the Shanghai, outside, the, this is mostly in a rural area. So if you, if you take a look at their top, you know, five major city, it's really not affecting those city. Um, it's, it's, it's essentially all the outskirt, uh, you know, outliner. This is like, if you in, if you're in Australia, this is like affecting somewhere, uh, in a small town called Perch in uh, Perch or Perch, you know, Western or Tasmania somewhere, you know, uh, Tasmania Island somewhere, you know, uh, if you're in Canada, this is like, it's like a small town in Nova Scotia, nobody ever heard of, you know. And it's not it's not affecting Toronto per se because he live in a big city, and he live in Shanghai. So he's it's, he's like, hey, I'm going to work. I'm coming home. I'm doing doing normal things. So I I'm not sure what's going on. You know, uh, life is good. Life is still normal and where he's at in in Shanghai. So he he doesn't see the effect of it in major city yet. So this is still in a rural area. Now, Matt, do you sense that, or or you or you sense there's something else? Yeah, I don't know. Um, in all honesty, yeah. Um, no, it, probably realistically, I get that same sense. In all honesty, mm -hmm. um, but like if if China implodes, it's going to implode, yeah. and it's going to be big. Um, and I don't know whether there are sectors that can be spared that contagion effect. Um, like it doesn't affect them directly, it affects them indirectly. Um, yeah. um, uh, how do I put this? Um, um, yeah, it, it's still probably too early to tell in all honesty. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, I think I think it's too early for, especially us outside looking in. But yeah. here, here's, here's something, Matt, I don't know if you agree with this. The worst situation you can do in a situation like this is actually sell at a loss. So like I, I my average is $17.23. And right now it's fourteen seventy three, but it's generating me $1,000. So I'm not going to sell it. Because it's giving me no. money, so if it doesn't yeah. give me money, that's a different conversation. But it's giving me good money, so as a result, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna keep and riot until it doesn't give me any more money, um, and and I'm I'm making good money out of it. I'm gonna keep riding it. Uh, I'm gonna keep watching it. Uh, now, if you're new, I think there's a great opportunity to steal steal this thing at a very cheap price. Uh, my average is seventeen dollars. It's three dollar higher than almost two dollars and something higher than than the current price right now. Uh, can I DCA down? Yeah, I can I can still keep DCA. And then I do, and I keep DCA down, but not a lot. It's not like I do it with Tesla where I buy 100 shares at a time. I'm buying only 20, 30 shares at a time. So it, it, it will come down. I'm just not as, as urgent as I need to be because I already reached $1,000. Uh, and, and that's how yeah. I play it. Uh, what, what's your take on it? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Look, as I said, um, if I was to sell now, I'm down in just on the share price thirty three thousand bucks round figures, just yeah. north of thirty two, which is one month's distribution. Yeah. Okay. So if you only own, you know, a um, thousand shares or fifteen hundred shares or something, just reduce the zeros and multiply by one point five. It's not not difficult to do your own numbers. Um. But I'm, as I said, I'm watching it like a hawk. Like it's not, my average price is fifteen twenty five at the moment. So I'm comfortable there. I'm not buying any more at the moment. And I'm certainly not selling unless I see something that says, hey, you need to be out of this. Because that's just prudent then. If, if something comes up and, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's a negative, that's probably the time to sell, but not before. Yeah, and as I said, I'm not really in a selling mood, but I'm watching it really, really closely. 
Um, some people would say it's too high a risk for them and that's fine, I understand it, and they're probably better off selling rather than letting it do their head in, you know, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm built to, to withstand some red on the screen and, and not worry about it too much because I've got a pretty solid plane behind me, but it is what it is. Like, if I have to sell, I have to sell. It's that simple. I'm not going to let it cost me money, um, but I'm not doing so as an e-jerk reaction to something either. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, any last word here before I stop this segment of the recording? Uh, no, but I'm pretty good. Thank you. All right. Oh, I mean, everybody else. <laughs> anybody yeah, else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if no one else comments and, uh, uh so we're going to, I'm going to stop this recording.